Aquinas talks about distinct virtues of the intellect or excellencies that qualify human understanding. And he distinguishes what we could call knowledge, the word in Latin for him is scientia, explanatory philosophical understanding of the world, from what he calls sapientia or wisdom, knowledge and wisdom. And the distinction is really between a philosophical approach to reality that allows you to understand the nuts and bolts of things, to carve reality at the joints, to understand what reality is really about, versus a kind of summit, it's actually a kind of completion of knowledge or scientia, where you get ultimate explanations. And that's when you understand the ultimate fundamental causes of all things, which is God. Okay, so if God is actually the transcendent author of our being and the ultimate explanatory cause of all of reality, then sapientia or wisdom is possible. What's wisdom? Well, wisdom is a kind of knowledge of how to understand everything that is second in light of the one thing that is first, to get ultimate perspective on reality. So for Aquinas, you get ultimate perspective on reality when you understand what's first. I don't think that's actually controversial in itself. A materialist atheist who really wants to get the truth of things and says everything deep down is just the physiological processes of the body, which is ultimately reduced to you know, the, the material causes of physics, the laws of physics, and so forth. This person wants to get what's first and explain everything second in light of what's first, like the laws of physics. Well, Aquinas thinks actually the laws of physics and the biological processes of the body and the spiritual processes of the soul and the existence of all things are ultimately only understood rightly if they're understood as fundamentally derivative from a first cause as God. So that's when you get to the ultimate cause. That's perspective. That's wisdom. Now he says it's actually not just the most speculative or theoretical science because it explains everything second in light of what's first, but it's also the most practical that may seem like a strong or bold claim, but it, it makes sense too. When you understand what's first in reality, then you live a certain way in light of what's ultimately real. So, for example, if you're a materialist uh, all the way down, you're going to have a certain kind of practical life. It may involve doing a lot of the same things as the monotheist who's next to you in the grocery store buying milk. The atheist is buying milk. The monotheist is buying milk. There's a certain range of practical activity that they're going to share. They're, they get sick, they go to the doctor. But in terms of the ultimate orientation of their life, it's going to be affected, if they're consistent in their way of seeing the world, by what they think is most ultimately real. So the point is that knowledge of God, however poor, however meager it is, because it's real knowledge, allows us to gain perspective on life in its ultimate horizons of where we come from and where we may go in terms of our destiny, and then to have a kind of practical self-orientation that affects our whole life in light of what is most ultimately real. And that's why Aquinas calls it wisdom. It's not just explanatory knowledge, but it's also a practical knowledge that stems from that privileged perspective on what's most ultimate that allows us to guide our life towards its ultimate horizon. And Aquinas thinks that knowledge of God in the philosophical order grants philosophical wisdom, philosophical perspective and practical reasoning in light of what's most ultimate. So there's a kind of vocation to philosophy as philosophy to be wisdom. And he thinks this is true also for religious people and for Christians, for people who believe in divine revelation. They need to respect this sapiential orientation of philosophy that allows human beings to, in a, in a certain way, naturally orient, understand themselves in light of God and orient their lives towards God, even in the rational order.